Self-love is the cure to self-hate. If you want to be happy, you have to love yourself. Self-love is the cure to feeling depleted, feeling like you have nothing left, you have no energy. Self-discipline is self-love. Your journey will have unexpected stops. It will have curves. It will have hills. It will have valleys. You will have sunny days. You will have rainy days. But you have to decide. If I encounter rejection, if I encounter frustration, I will not give up. You will find the calm, the peace, the hope, the faith, the courage, the expectancy you need to live. If you never get married, you are not. If you never pass that law degree, you are not. If you never become a doctor, you are not. If you never get married, you are not. If you never have a child, you are enough like you are. And that's why God created you. You are enough. The first thing you got to realize is that you got to love yourself. It's about self-love. Start understanding that if you're going to do something with your life, you got to fall in love with yourself again. The moment you start talking about self-love, you start seeing, you turn that lens inward and you start coming in contact with your personal emotional history, right? You start, if I really love myself, how can I live a better life? It is time to be more selfish, where it's all about you and taking care of you. Your mindset, your belief system is everything. And it is so powerful. And so I came all the way from Atlanta, Georgia to tell you, you were not a mistake. You were not an accident. You were here for a reason. I know you're going through some hard times. I know life at times might feel rough or you might feel weird or things might be frustrating, but it's not going to always be like this. Your condition is not your conclusion. There is so much more that's going to take place. There is so much more power that's inside you. If you make up in your mind, I choose to believe that I can do great things. And I promise you, my young friends, I got to a point in life when I was like, man, I got these teachers. They must really care. Like when you start having teachers that get diagnosed with cancer, but they still show up to school. One of my teachers had arthritis so bad, she couldn't even write on the chalkboard. Other teacher was going through a divorce. Another one that just buried her child. I'm looking at all these teachers that's going through life just like you, just like me, but they kept showing up. So something inside my brain said, maybe I am worth it. Something inside me said, maybe I can do great things. For them to jump through all these hoops and go out of their way to kind of connect with me, for them to make these sacrifices, maybe it is possible for me. It's the same way with you. Sometimes I go back to like being that little boy in the hallway that ever heard that teacher tell my mom that I wasn't high school material. Then I have to remind myself like, no, 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 that, that, no that, that's not true. I am that. I can do that. I can achieve that. Sometimes I have to remind myself, what am I telling you? Like life can be hard. Life can be rough, but there's something special. And there's something powerful about the human mind and about the human spirit and about the human will. When you tell yourself, I won't give up. I won't surrender. I won't quit. I'm going to show up every single day and do the best that I can. And here's the beautiful thing about you is while you're going through your process and while you're trying to navigate these waters, and while you're still, you know, trying to tweak some stuff within yourself, you still got the power to save somebody else's life. You got the power to speak up for others. You got the power to be the voice of reason for someone who might be on the verge of doing something they shouldn't do. You have the power to brighten somebody's day. Your words are powerful. Your energy is powerful. And so I don't want you all to think that you have to have it all together and everything for you has to be perfect in order for you to be a leader. No, 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 no. You can make an impact. You can make a difference. You can save somebody's life right now by you just being unapologetically you and you walking in that calling and you speak life and you affirm and you let others know I see you and I'm with you and I got your back and you're not by yourself and I will hold your hand as you go throughout this journey and even though I'm struggling I don't mind fighting on behalf of you and we're gonna figure this thing out together <laughs> key word together no one will ever hate you with the intensity that you can hate yourself and that's why you absolutely must 
take the time to build your self-worth. And I really wish that building your self-worth was simply as easy as repeating to yourself that you love yourself. But it's not. The reality is, if you want to love yourself, you have to do something that is worthy of that love. You have to do something that you believe in. You have to find a way to build credibility with yourself, to tell yourself you're going to do something and know that you're actually going to see it through. The reality is we're all watching ourselves all the time. We know how we behave. And so you really have to think about that. I want it to be enough. I want it to be enough that you exist and that you're going to be okay simply because you are. But the reality is we don't look at life like that and we do judge ourselves and we do think about whether or not we're following through on the things that we said we were going to do. And it's okay to start small. It's okay not to have a grand dream. It's okay not to be able to do that yet. It is very okay not to be extraordinary. You don't need that to love yourself. But what you do need is purpose. What you do need is to take that time to define what is it that you're trying to do with your life? Why do you matter? What is it that you're going to be able to bring to yourself and to the world and it doesn't have to be big? It just has to be real. It has to be something that's true to you. It has to be something that you're willing to commit to. And once you're willing to commit to it, to put in the energy every day to get up and pursue that thing. And again, this is not me. I'm not judging you. I can really tell you. I love you and it's enough that you just exist. But I know that in your head, in all of our heads, is a voice that says that just isn't true. And so to connect with ourselves and to find that meaning and to develop it, to create meaning in our lives, we have to set an intention and we have to pursue that intention. Start small, know what you want, get out of bed, get after it, set rules for yourself, follow those rules. Once you start doing those simple things, and again, they don't have to be big, but once you start setting a rule, having an intention, following your rules, building towards that intention, suddenly you're going to earn that credibility with yourself. And then all of a sudden, no matter what anybody says to you, and they are going to say negative things, haters are going to come after you. That is just a reality of life, but you will be impervious to that if you have built within you belief belief that you are worthy because you take small steps every day to do something that means something to you. It doesn't matter what other people think, but it matters a lot what you think about yourself. So every day, earn that worth. One of the hardest things I've had to do is confront mediocrity in my own life. I'm challenging you to commit to dismantling whatever it is that has been holding your destiny hostage. Is it self-doubt? Is it the fear of being rejected? Is it self-sabotage? Is it refusing to let go of the past? Don't get so wrapped up in what happened yesterday that you miss out on the opportunities that are waiting for you today. Remember, whenever one door closes, there is another door waiting for you. Don't second guess yourself and don't be so afraid of failing that you create excuses instead of producing results. After being involved in a physically abusive relationship for six years, I had to rewrite my script. I do understand that a lot of times when you go through things, it feels like it's for you, but it really isn't. It's really so that you can help someone else get through that same thing. And you can say to them, listen, I made it through and so can you. I really thought that I would be the last person to do what I'm doing just because of what I've overcome, what I thought about myself. I did not like myself. I did not like the way I looked. I did not like the person in the mirror. And so I was the person who was in front of everyone else and everyone thought I was happy. Everyone thought I had it all together, but I was secretly depressed. I was secretly battling with a low self-confidence and I was so broken. And, and how many of you know that when you are broken sometimes, you can attract the exact opposite of what you need? In retrospect, I know why I stayed in an unhealthy relationship for six years. In my mind, I could not do any better. In my mind, there was no way that anyone else would be attracted to me. So I stayed. 
But eventually, I came to realize that I was not lucky to have him, but he was lucky to have me. I came to realize that I deserved better. You see, setting higher standards might mean that you have to wait a little longer than you anticipated, but getting what you deserve will be worth the wait. Will you commit to making yourself a priority? Yes, there are a lot of people counting on you. Yes, others need you. But guess who else needs you? You need you. Be confident in your ability to overcome any challenge that comes your way. Why? Because your level of confidence is going to determine what you strive for. If you don't have confidence, what you'll do is you'll see something that you want, but you won't go for it because you'll tell yourself, I'm not cut out for this. I'm not good enough for this. I don't speak well enough for this. I'm not credentialed enough or I'm not qualified enough. And what you're doing is holding yourself back. I never thought that I would be speaking. I never thought that I would be Dr. Jessica Houston. I never thought that I would be traveling the world. I never thought that I would be an author. But it took me stepping out of my comfort zone. It took me saying to myself, you will not let your daughter take the same route that you took. That's what helped me the most. What I have discovered is that women are very good at pretending to be okay. Many times we suppress what we're dealing with and we cover it all up. Women are natural nurturers. In fact, we often help and support others even when we are facing a challenging situation ourselves. Unlocking your destiny is going to require that you add yourself to your priority list. You need you. It's time for you to recognize your talents, your gifts, the mark that you want to leave on this earth as you go to places that maybe you've not been before. You see, leaders know the importance of getting uncomfortable. They know that nothing grows in their comfort zone. They, you, are prepared to rise up and be the person that you want to follow. Leaders know how to lead their own ship, their own vessel, in the direction that matters to them. Very few people dream of where they're going. And better yet, get other people to follow in their dream. To get the best out of you and the best out of people you lead. It's essential to realize your burning desire, who you want to become, what you want to achieve and recognizing that every single thing that you do, every day, you're writing your future. Take a moment to imagine that you can see an image of yourself in the future. Maybe a year, maybe two years, maybe five years. It's you being even better than you are today. It's you who's practiced doing what you need to do each and every single day. It's you healthier, stronger, more confident. Look at the person you have become and recognize this is your destiny. Feel what it feels like to have put the work in to have developed yourself. You are the leader. You are the master of your own life. 
time to rise up and inspire yourself. Be the better version of yourself today. You can be your very best every single day. You don't get to choose how you start in this life, but you do get to choose what you do. There'll be times you feel incapable of rising to meet the challenges that face you. You'll be tempted to turn your back and run, but running is never the best option. When you're in the middle of a struggle, the only way out is through. Rather than running away from obstacles or trying to figure out some kind of way around them, go right through them. Brace yourself steady your nerves, put your head down, and tackle whatever you face head on. The storm may jar you a bit, but I promise that you won't buckle and you won't break. Believe in your ability to weather the storm. When you come out on the other side, you'll be better for showing your strength. The fears you face along the way, they'll make you better. Our biggest fears always carry with them the greatest opportunity for personal growth. Our fears and how we face them brings out the best in us. If something doesn't scare us, if something doesn't challenge us, it doesn't change us. In life, we have two choices. We either step forward, expose ourselves to risk and evolve, or we play it safe and we step backwards into the shadows. Remember that the safest path brings the least reward. Stop being afraid of what could go wrong and start believing in what could go right. There may be a million reasons you're afraid to follow your dreams, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't go after what your heart desires. Dare to face your fears. Dare to take risks. Dare to be better. Success isn't about greatness. It's about consistency. No one's born great. You'll be faced with difficult situations. There'll be times that you don't believe in your ability to persevere. We all have a choice when it comes to building our future. If you show up day after day and work hard, if you give your full effort, if you leave nothing on the table, then greatness and success will come. The true secret of success is to accept the truth that the only path is the path of hard work and productivity. You'll get where you want to go and achieve your goals if you follow four simple rules. Show up, work hard, don't quit, and ask some questions along the way. Your dreams aren't going to come true on their own, so it's time to get to work. It's not going to be easy. Great things never get dropped in your lap and they never start from comfort zones. If you want to be something you've never been, you need to do something you've never done. Scary, right? Wrong. You know what's really scary? Being trapped in a perpetual cycle of unhappiness. Looking at yourself in the mirror each day and not liking the reflection you see staring back at you. Don't live your life like that. At any time, you can change your circumstances and you can change your life. You have the power to do anything you want to do. You just need to be willing to do things differently than you've done before. You need to be willing to take risks. You need to be daring. If you're willing to step out of your safe zone, if you're willing to stand at the edge of the cliff and jump, if you're willing to do what you
yourself the power to become what you've never been. Will it be easy? Probably not. But if you want to change your life, you'll need to do what's right, not what's easy. Too many people choose the easy road even when they know it's not the right road. Take the path less traveled. Real greatness isn't determined by some birthright or fate. Real greatness is determined by what you do with the hand that you're dealt. Do you want to coast through life without fulfilling the potential that lives within you? Do you really want to wake up one day and realize that all of the dreams you have had have passed you by? Each one of us has dreams and we have passions. We have things that we want to accomplish. The real question is how bad do you want it? And what are you willing to do to get it? If you want to live a happy and healthy life, you have to put yourself first when you need it the most, regardless of the consequences that may occur. It's better to lose your job, lose your partner, fail your test, or walk away than it is to forget who you are. The reality is that even though we paint a perfect picture of what our life should look like, it never turns out the way we want it. And that's okay because it's not trying to avoid the storms that happen in life, but learning how to dance in the rain. And when all odds are against you and everything's a mess, two words, self-care. Because at the end of the day, you gotta live with the choices you make in life, no one else. It's time we start putting our best interest at the top of our to-do list. Physically, it's the activities you can do that will help you with the stress in your life. Financially, it's the money you're spending or the money you're saving. Spiritually, it's your religion. Not someone else's religion, your religion. Mentally, it's how to control your emotions or even handle regrets. Relationships, like your family, your friends. Time management, what are you wasting your time on? Your future, what's your goals, your plans, and the dreams you have? Your legacy. What are you leaving behind? Sacrifices. What do you know you need to do that you're not doing? And self-control. What are your weaknesses and how can you be better? You know what, I'm not just a student. You know what I'm saying? That just happened to me in this grade. I'm not just here at the school. I'm here for a reason. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta tell yourself, man, I feel like I've been pushed down in the dirt. I feel like people have been stumping on me. I feel like stuff has been raining on me. But you didn't realize this, my young friends, you was just a seed. So you gotta tell yourself, no, 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 no. I haven't been pushed down in the dirt and I haven't been stumped on. I've been planted and I've been placed in this pot for a reason. And we are at this arena here to be able to have a conversation to say, what does it look like to go to that next level? And so I need you all to do the same thing. If you feel like you're in a weird place, if you feel stuck, if you feel like, you know what, I, I just feel like I need some help, you get the help you need. That's how you show how strong and how bold and how powerful you are. What's the next app that you're gonna create? 
You know what I'm saying? Sometimes I wonder, like, you know what I'm saying? Are you going to come up with a cure for Alzheimer's, dementia? Are you going to come up, you know what I'm saying, with something that can purify water for people across the globe? Are you going to create the next app that can connect us? Are you going to be the next teacher or superintendent? Are you going to be the next leader in our community? Like, like I be wondering sometimes, like, what are the great things that you're going to accomplish? And there are times when I look at what's happening in the world, and I'm a bit discouraged. I got a seven-year-old daughter and a one-year-old baby boy. Sometimes I look at the crazy stuff that's happening in this world, and I'm like, man, what kind of world am I raising my kids in? But then I'm encouraged because I get to come to events like this, and I get to look in your faces and connect with you, and I have no doubt that there's great things inside you and that you're going to experience some amazing things inside your life if you make a decision to say, I'm going to speak up, I'm going to stand up, I'm going to save a life. If you tell yourself, I will be a leader. If you tell yourself, I'm going to show up every single day at my school and I'm going to go above and beyond because there are some kids in some different countries and some different places that wish they had the opportunity to be at my school, to have floors and lights, you know what I'm saying, and screens and technology. I've been some places, my young friends, where I've walked to some schools in some different countries doing some volunteer work and I'm seeing the facilities they in. I, I, I know I've met some kids that would love to come here and be able to go to a school that has a gym or be able to go to a school that has AC or to be able to go to a school that has desks or to be able to go to school where they get their own books and then some of y'all tablets and all these extra things. We are so privileged. What do we do with this opportunity that we have? I want to challenge you to make the most of it, to speak life, to love, to encourage, to, to, to wrap your arms around those who are struggling and you let them know, you know what, you're not in this by yourself. What we're not going to do is we're not going to quit. What we're not going to do is we're not going to surrender. What we're not going to do is we're going to just, you know what I'm saying, just stay in this place. We knew that eventually things would change. Like eventually it's going to turn around for my good and we'll be stronger from it and we'll be better equipped and this will make us better people. Now you can't always control what happens to you, my friends, but you can control how you respond to it. As the hospital door opened, there she was, my mom, her final moments. My life turned into such a mess. Why couldn't I have seen her one last time? Yet, yet, in the face of all of that adversity, I stand here in front of you today, saying that I, Adam speaks I, I am thriving. Why am I thriving? Because I had a mother. Nah, and I had a mother. I had a mother to clothe me, feed me. Tolerate me, raise me, and now, now I have a mother in my beautiful grandmother. I have a mother in my beautiful aunties. I have the best friends, I have the best family. Why am I thriving? Because now I compare my situation to the world. The world is in tatters, the world is battered, and yes, some parts of the world still don't know if their black lives matter. The world is in chains, suffering. Remain, so I thrive to make sure I change this. That I, Adam speaks, I spark changes. Why am I thriving? Because I found where I belong. Here, speaking to you. Not for money, not for fame, but for me to do what I love and perform. And try and change this world. You see, adversity. Adversity has knocked me down on a number of occasions, but that isn't going to phase me because I'm going to fight back. I'm going to uppercut and swing from my heart because I'm telling you now, this is just the start. And I know you guys are thinking, Adam, what's this got to do with us? Well, hear me out. Because saying adversity is my best friend, that wasn't an easy task, but I've learned. I've learned to have a strong heart. So now, whenever adversity hits me, I ask myself three questions. What, why, and who? Whenever adversity hits me, I ask myself, Adam, what do you want to achieve in this world? I, I want to be the best speaker this world has ever seen. Adam, why do you want to achieve it? I want to be a voice for those that are forced to voice less. I want to be a microphone for the oppressed. Adam, who, 
Who do you want to achieve this for? Well, oh, that's simple. My mother, the woman who raised me, the one whose legacy I want to spread. I want to do it for those without milk or bread. I want to do it for those who have to watch where they tread or they'll get a bullet struck at their head. Who? Who do I want to do this for? That's simple. Little me, little Adam speaks. She grew up with nothing. I grew up with nothing. I grew up in the poorest borough of London. I want to do it for my teachers who put up with my mischief. I want to do it for the world, man. I want to show the world that it doesn't matter about the size of your closet. It doesn't matter about the size of your wallet. It doesn't matter if you think the whole world is against you. It doesn't matter about the color of your skin, the language you speak. Because I'm telling you now, all of this, this is just the start. Who, who am I doing this for? Most importantly, the one who has given me the chance to breathe, to see, to hear, to speak. The one and only, my God, the Almighty. So now, now I say to every single one of you here today, I don't know. I don't know what kind of adversity you're going through. I don't know if you're struggling to make ends meet. I don't know if you're suffering from depression. I don't know if you're struggling with anxiety. I don't know if you harm yourself. I don't know if you're about to commit suicide. I don't know if you're struggling with your exams. I don't know if you've lost a loved one. I don't know if you think the whole world is against you. I don't know the answer. I don't know. I just know there's hope, man. So whenever adversity hits you, ask yourself, what do you want to achieve in this world? Why do you want to achieve it? And who? Who do you want to achieve it for? And once you find your answers, use that. Use that as your motivation to overcome. Use that as your climb. Use that as your leap. And I know it's easier said than done. But if you guys want to achieve your dreams, it's got to be done because time, time does not wait for anyone. So what are you waiting for? Go out into this world and get what's yours, adversity. Is in every walk of life, in every step we take, in every situation we encounter, it is up to us to smile in the face of adversity. It is up to us to be the agents of change when we see unfair adversity. It is up to you to make adversity your best friend. It is up to us to start putting the word human into humanity. I've been Adam Speaks. I am going to help those who cry. I am going to help those who cannot sleep at night. I am going to help those with eyes full of fright. And if you, if you want to do the same, then maybe we can do more than survive in this world. Maybe we can do more than change this world. Maybe we can all thrive in the face of adversity.